Peter, now Arkansas and Texas A&M will meet again. Can the Razorbacks pull off the upset in this top 25 battle? Texas A&M was originally Texas scheduled to play Tennessee. They were not a they were not available due to COVID related issues. So Arkansas stepped up to the challenge. Texas A&M just one loss on the season. That was to LSU. So excited to be with you, Courtney Lau, alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. Looking back at that first meeting between Arkansas and Texas A&M, the Aggies dominated down low. They had 44 points in the paint. And that's what Texas A&M does. They make a living in the paint, but in their last game against LSU, Texas A&M only had 18 paint points. This front court has got to get back on track. Kayla Wells, India Jones, and Sierra Johnson, They've got to each do their part in getting a piece of the paint. Now, Kayla Wells, she does a terrific job of, because the defense respects her three-point shot, getting a piece of the paint off the bounce. Sierra Johnson's got to post up big, show her numbers and want the ball inside. And India Jones, she's got to do what she does, and that is play cleanup off broken plays. And also to be there when her teammates take shots, play cleanup, and get the offensive put back because Texas A&M's got to get a lot of twos because they're going to have to be able to slow down what Arkansas does so well, and that's knock down the three-point shot. They are number two in the country in total three-pointers made, and these women aren't towing the line, but they're shooting it deep, specifically Amber Ramirez, and Ramirez has been red hot as of late in each of the last three games. She has made five three-pointers in each of the last three games. Wow just incredible and don't forget Amber Ramirez did not play in the first game against Texas A&M she was unavailable in concussion protocol she could be an X factor today for Mike Neighbors and the Arkansas Razorbacks they have won three straight games including what could be the biggest win in Arkansas's program history a win over UConn in the regular season Gary Blair meanwhile comes in with the Texas A&M team that's tied for first in the nation in total wins. They are 17 and one on the season. The last two meetings between these two teams have been decided by a total of two points. It should be a close one inside Reed Arena this afternoon. It'll be interesting to watch. How does Arkansas where does Arkansas put Chelsea Dungy in the man-to-man -man defense? Because you've got to keep Chelsea Dungy out of foul trouble. Well, Amber Ramirez picked up her first foul pretty quickly into this game. Dungy has been incredible. 20 or more points in nine of Arkansas's last 10 games. Kayla Wells at the line right now for A&M. Texas A&M, a really solid free throw shooting team. Both of these teams are. They're eighth in the nation in free throws made this season with 272 now. Well, Texas A&M continuing to attack inside and to stay aggressive. And what Gary Blair was looking for is how do they get early scoring, scoring quick. Arkansas starting five. You see Amber Ramirez back in the lineup. Texas A&M didn't see her there in that starting lineup last time. It was Jalen Mason who got the nod. We saw Amber Ramirez already. We haven't even been a minute into the game. She's already hit a three. That's a good sign for Arkansas. Texas A&M starting five has not changed. Jordan Nixon runs things at the point guard position for Texas A&M, the transfer from Notre Dame. Keep an eye on Amber Ramirez. We talked about she's hit five threes in each of the last three games. And look at how far back, too, she will pull the trigger. That's a good shot for her. Dungy for two. Interested to see how Texas A&M starts this game. Over the last few games, they've been really slow to get going, including their last game on Thursday against LSU. Kayla Wells with a nice jumper. And Kayla Wells is picking right up where she left off against LSU. She was the offensive spark for Texas A&M, especially in the second half. Slocum drives and kicks to Ramirez. 
Daniels. Another thing that Texas A&M was slow in scoring was because Sierra Johnson running in transition, she's got to make herself an option. You see her standing on the back side. She's got to want the ball. Well, take a look at how A&M has started. Their first SEC games, they averaged over 16 points in the first quarter. But the last three games, just 10 points in the first quarter. I think a lot of that has to do with Texas A&M starting the game in those previous last three games in the matchup zone. And when you do that, you don't have really deflection opportunities like you would if you started in a man-to-man. -man. I think I heard Gary Blair call Sierra, so we'll see if she is the option to post up inside for the Aggies. Gary Blair really wanted his post players, India Jones and Sierra Johnson specifically, to want the basketball today as Jones finishes. In that game against LSU, it didn't look like they wanted the basketball. They didn't post up very hard, and that's why they had a season low in points for both Johnson and Jones. Now, a lot of times post players can get out of sync. When you have good guards, You've got Aaliyah Wilson, Kayla Wells that are playing well from the perimeter. So a lot of times you've got to get your timing of when the duck in is going to happen. You see Sierra Johnson there. If she had ducked in bigger on the middle, in the middle, that would have left India Jones even more open on that backside. Taylor Thomas whistled for her first foul. It's going to be Arkansas basketball. Arkansas has missed its last three shots. This is a high-scoring Razorback team. They are sixth in the nation in points per game, about 85 per game. Daniels for three, no. And it looks like Texas A&M going with the man-to-man -man as opposed to the matchup. Big three ball by Leo Wilson, the Arkansas transfer now playing for the Aggies. And here's my thought. When you start in a man-to-man -man and you get stops, that gives you a lot of confidence on the offensive end. So Texas A&M right now has Arkansas's number defensively and then offensively. Now, Aaliyah Wilson in rhythm, knocking down the three-point shot. Seven straight points for Texas A&M. Johnson double teamed. Amber Ramirez does such a good job of helping out in that double team down low. And you've got to scout that Amber Ramirez is going to be there. When you get an offensive rebound and you're the size of Sierra Johnson, just go right back up with it. You have more chance than not of either getting the finish or getting a chance at the free throw line. The timing up between the guards and the post is so key of knowing a lot of times the guards are so quick to reverse it away before the post gets a chance to establish. Arkansas trying to break out of the scoring drought. Chelsea Dungy helps them do it. She dropped 37 points in that win over UConn. And ever since the last time these two teams met, it was Chelsea Dungy that called Mike Neighbors and said, I'm going to be more coachable. I'm going to do whatever you need me to do in order to help this team win. And he talks about how hard she works in practice. Now she's become one of their best practice players. He says even when they're not working on something and she's standing off to the side, she's working on her ball handling. She's staying active, staying involved in practice, and it's made a difference. You gotta understand, when you draw as much attention as Chelsea Dungy does from us, the media, from the fans, you are the leader and your work ethic is contagious. And when you demonstrate working in those extra times, the rest of your teammates are gonna follow suit. Go, 
Wells driving, shakes off the defender, puts it through. That's six points for Kayla Wells. Dungey dumps it off to Aaron Barnum, going to the free throw line. But Kayla Wells has been big for the Aggies in this first quarter. But Kayla Wells just really looking for her opportunities in space, knocks down the two. The last two meetings between Arkansas and Texas A&M have been decided by a total of two points. Let's take you to the leads to the pass that leads to the score inside for his post game. How do you think this change we've seen from A&M, the man-to-man -man defense, has helped, especially guarding against Arkansas's ability to shoot the three right now? Well, I think it's more of it's still his matchup zone, but they're switching. They go with cutters now and so it's similar to what LSU did it morphs so at times you may end up on top if your player goes though without a screen you stay with them with the screen you can switch that off Arkansas has struggled to shoot just 33 percent so far in this game there's an easy bucket from Aaron Barnum Wow, Arkansas actually is outscoring Texas A&M in the paint right now, 6-2. to two. But if you're playing Arkansas, you want that. As long as you've got Arkansas taking twos instead of threes, <laughs> when you don't shoot the three ball as well as they do, you've got a chance. Jordan Nixon from range. This is Destiny Slocum. Oh, and the ball bounced off of Aaron Barnum's foot. It'll be a turnover. Sierra Johnson's got to stay alert, though, on the back of that zone. When there is a screen action, she can't get caught watching the ball because Aaron Barnum has done a nice job of just making herself available. Aaron keep Barnum an eye had six on. points and three rebounds in that first meeting with Texas A&M. Just watch the action of Aaron Barnum. She's going to be left alone on the backside when the drive happens and there's a rotation going over. Texas A&M gets over rotated. Barnum has done a terrific job of making herself available in the open space. Jordan Nixon just picked up her second foul, so that means Texas A&M's point guard is going to have to go to the bench. They've brought in Mackenzie Green, who is a sophomore. Also, Destiny Pitts has come in for the Aggies. Mason back to Daniels. Floater from Michaela Daniels, the sophomore. But again, for Texas A&M, that's a win because there was a lot of penetration in, but instead of con in committing to the driver and coming completely off a three-point drive, it was just a little jab and getting back. Inside to Johnson. Destiny Pitts. They'll try India Jones in traffic. Dunsey drives in and gets fouled. She is so good at that, getting to the basket and getting to the free throw line. Chelsea Dungey is so strong, but it's not just going up for the shot. Watch her from the top. Next time she gets that penetration, she dribbles so hard. Nobody's going to take that from her. So the ball comes back up strong to lead her into her shot. India Jones was called for the foul. Daniel short on the long ball. Offensive foul on Aaliyah Wilson. Offensive Aaliyah Wilson, full head of steam, but a terrific defensive play by Michaela Daniels. She gets there and establishes correct defensive position and is able to draw the charge. 
Mike Neighbors has said multiple times, Michaela Daniels impacts the game maybe more than any player. She's just a sophomore. I feel like a lot of times we talk about the big three for Arkansas being Dungy, Ramirez, and Slocum, but Michaela Daniels could be right in that mix with them too. Well, when you have a big three that can score like the three that you just listed, is you've got to have a person who has the option and understands when to get the ball to who and where. And that's what Michaela Daniels understands because she, after having a year, her freshman year, to play under Mike Neighbors, he un she understands his system. Johnson misses the first. Thursday for Wooden Award late season finalists highlight a great women's basketball doubleheader. Zaya Cook and Aaliyah Boston lead number two South Carolina against Missouri at seven. Then Chelsea Dungy and this Arkansas team host Rakia Jackson and number 24 Mississippi State right here on the SEC Network that's coming up on Thursday. Don't forget too, South Carolina plays UConn tomorrow night. Three point basket, Amber Ramirez. Amber Ramirez. Ramirez. I'm Ramirez again, deep from three. She has their only two three-point shots. Mackenzie Green. The all out, full out man to man from Texas AM right now. And it's making Arkansas go deep into the shot clock, something they don't love to do. That's a great point, Courtney. Arkansas likes to score in the first 10 seconds of the shot clock. A lot of times it's a no pass or a one pass or a hard dribble, make the defense commit, and they've got openings. They're either getting layups or they're getting threes, and that man-to-man -man from Texas A&M made them go deep into the shot clock. Shot clock still on for McGinsey Green and Texas A&M. Jordan Nixon on the bench with two fouls. Taken away by Aaron Barnum. The shot clock should be off. Ramirez has got to hustle. Texas A&M leads it after 10 minutes here in Bryan College Station, 17 to 14. Coming up, how this Texas A&M group is using their voice on and off the court. These have the advantage here inside Reed Arena. They've won the last five meetings in Bryan College Station. I think they've got the clock situation sorted out. So we should be good to roll here. Texas A&M originally supposed to play Tennessee this afternoon, but Arkansas answered the call when Tennessee was not available due to COVID-related concerns. We're certainly Mike glad they did answer the call because now we have a top 16 matchup. Well, and I think Mike Neighbors is sitting on ready. Anybody has an open date, they call him, he's in. <laughs> He's ready to yeah, go. Yeah, no kidding. Even if it's UConn, right? Uh, absolutely. And that was a big game for Mike Neighbors to get in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The shot clock did not start, so maybe we didn't get all the clock situation under control, but I'm sure they'll figure it out. They reset it to 26 seconds on the shot clock. Courtney, you asked when we were on the Zoom with Mike Neighbors, I thought you asked an interesting question because Mike Neighbors was on the staff with Gary Blair when he coached at Arkansas and asked if what he took from Gary Blair that he sees in himself now. And he really complimented Coach Blair on how he, in public, he gives all the praise. And when he needs to critique or criticism, that's in a whisper. 
and he said he uh, – Mike Neighbors said he has tried to take that from Gary Blair because players appreciate that. They don't want to be on blast when they need to be corrected out in public. You do that at home, and then that gives them opportunities to learn and to get better. So, you know, the, the great wisdom of Gary Blair definitely has rubbed off on Mike Neighbors. Yeah, Coach Neighbors was the Arkansas Director of Operations under Gary Blair from 1999 to 01. So that season after Gary Blair took Arkansas to the Final Four. I did love, though, Mike told us, sometimes I do have some GB moments, some Gary Blair moments, where I realize I'm standing like him or I'm gesturing like him. There's little things that creep into his coaching. <laughs> some things you just watch you can't help but subconsciously emulate. emulate. Gary Blair's not a bad one to emulate. Won a national championship at Texas A&M back in 2011, and of course, as we mentioned, took Arkansas to the Final Four. Just Sierra one of Johnson. three coaches to make, take multiple teams to the Final Four. Absolutely, and this team has an opportunity to go to the Final Four if Sierra Johnson post up like she did that last possession. How did Slocum get that pass through? Just split the defense to Taylor Thomas. I can guarantee you that Mike Neighbors has scouted that Sierra Johnson is going to rotate over. She is going to help on penetration. But the problem is nobody's rotating down to take Sierra Johnson's person. Three seconds, Wilson loses the ball. Daniels has it. Seventh turnover for A&M. The off penetration, they're really picking on Sierra Johnson to have to go help, but who is gonna rotate over and then take Johnson's person? Uh-oh. Slocum short. She's coming off a fantastic game. She had 22 points and 10 assists against Missouri. First foul on Daniels. Well, watch Sierra Johnson really want and call for the basketball, getting both feet in the paint, really backing down Taylor Thomas. That is the kind of inside play Gary Blair's been looking for. That, look, that looked a lot different than what we saw against LSU on Thursday. It just seemed like, to me, in the LSU game against Faustina Fua, Sierra Johnson spent more time kind of dancing with the defense instead of establishing. Well, Tuesday on the SEC Network and the ESPN app, our basketball doubleheader starts at 6.30 Eastern. Number 10, Alabama squaring off against South Carolina. They were just upset by Missouri. Then Vandy hosting Auburn at Memorial Coliseum. That's coming up on Tuesday. Slocum, layup. Mackenzie Green, short on the runner. She's having to be the point guard right now, step in as Jordan Nixon is on the bench with two fouls. Ramirez in the corner. Now Arkansas has forced Texas A&M to go to a small lineup. India Jones is playing the five, and now he has four guards on the floor. He can rotate in. Destiny Pitts at the four, who has the ability to shoot the three and stretch the defense. Pitts, the transfer from Minnesota, was the Big Ten freshman of the year with the Golden Gophers. Dungy.
Arkansas trying to improve on their 7-1 run, and they will. Chelsea Dungy coast to coast. Texas A&M really having a problem against Arkansas's defense. Remember, Jordan Nixon, their normal point guard, is on the bench in foul trouble. And Mackenzie Green, number 23 in white, just a sophomore. Wilson got in trouble on the baseline. But it's going to be a foul on Michaela Daniels. But you see how Arkansas has you all spread out, worried about the perimeter shooting. What does that do? That allows the lane to drive, and Destiny Slocum takes full advantage. Taylor Thomas at the high post. Swings it to Daniels. Fourth three-pointer for Arkansas. They average almost 10 a game. Michaela Daniels helps Arkansas take a six-point lead after trailing by six in this game. Arkansas has kept the mentality of all season. They will play anyone, anywhere, anytime, as long as they get to play. And Amber Ramirez and the rest of the Razorbacks are ready for anything. We just have to be ready. Uh, we went into practice when coach said we have A&M Sunday. We're like, all right, bring, like, let's play. I mean, we don't want to. We don't want to miss games, and we try to do everything right as far as listening to our coaches and our athletic trainers as far as following the protocols and wearing a mask and staying six feet apart and not hanging out as much as we would like to. So I think following the protocols and being able to play, I would rather play than have a game canceled or postponed. So whenever it comes, they're like, all right, we're playing. And we're all like, all right, let's play. Arkansas answered the call. Mike Neighbors told us it wasn't out of the question that they would travel in day of game moving forward. Even after this season, it would be something for them to take a look at. Look, it's prepping you for the WNBA, those that are able to go on and extend their careers because you may have a back-to-back, -back, play one night and get up the next morning. There's Amber Ramirez again from deep. But get up the next morning, travel, get on the court, do the scouting report, and play again that night. So, hey, Chelsea Dungy, she's getting pro ready. Amber Ramirez has now gone three of five from, from three-point range. She's got nine points right now for Arkansas. <laughs> Offensive foul on Chelsea Dungy. We we're talking about Ramirez. Check out her numbers earlier in the season. First 15 games, averaging 12 points per game. That Georgia game, she had no field goals, just two points from the free throw line, but has really turned it on and regrouped the last three games. You know, and I asked Mike Neighbors about how the scoring had kind of dropped off and then picked back up, and he said, well, it's a couple of things. He said everybody respects Amber Ramirez, and so a lot of times they'll put a bigger guard or bigger defender on her. She also had some adversity at home that she was dealing with and then came back. She still was contributing in other ways, and she said that she has spent a lot of time talking with her family, and they have given her great confidence and have really helped her in her ability to bounce back in those games, especially starting with that UConn game. Battle underneath, finally a whistle is blown as India Jones working so hard to get the rebound. Texas A&M crushing the board battle 19 to nine. But watch this, India Jones, she's the only one on the glass. The other four player, where are teammates? Where is the help? It's not there. India Jones doing all the work by herself. Well, Sierra Johnson told us India Jones spoils them a little bit because she's so good <laughs> at rebounding. Sometimes they think they can just watch, but I'm sure Gary Blair would love everybody crashing the boards. 
Look, you can't get spoiled. You need to make that contagious. You see how hard India Jones is working. You need to put that kind of work in as well. Averages a double-double for Texas A&M. Dungey floater. Wow, that's back-to-back -back offensive fouls on Chelsea Dungey. And this is India Jones knowing the scouting report, especially knowing Dungey likes to go left, but to rotate over. Don't jump on that floater, but just stay planted because she, Dungey is the one floating forward. Just absorb the contact, and you're able to put another offensive foul on Chelsea Dungey. Wow, and Peck, that's three fouls on Chelsea Dungey, so she takes a seat. Remember, she got in foul trouble in the first meeting with Texas A&M. But Mike Neighbors talked about he was able to, because she's a smart player, able to go offense to defense with her. So it'll be interesting to see, does he go this last three and a half minutes with her on the bench? Because he's got the lead. Alexis Morris with the fadeaway. Morris is a player I thought could help Texas A&M in this game with her quickness and ability off the bounce, and she's a scoring point guard. Arkansas didn't see her in the first meeting. Yeah, Arkansas didn't see Alexis Morris, nor did they see Zay Green. She didn't play in that game either. They call this one on India Jones, second foul for India. Marquisha Davis at the free throw line. I like Q Davis, and Mike Neighbors even said she is a pro. She is so athletic, and she can finish some shots, really making acrobatic moves. Her body control and the things she can do with her length, she's going to be a great player at Arkansas. She's got a well-rounded skill set, too, because she had to do a little bit of everything for her high school team. They ask her to pretty much do it all, so brings that skill set into Arkansas. Well, and you look at what Arkansas is going to lose this year, especially a player like Chelsea Dungey if she cho chooses not to come back. Arkansas is going to have a lot of spots to fill, opportunities to bring even more of your scoring to the court if you're Q Davis. Now this is a free year, so to speak. You do have the choice to come back and play again if you would like. It doesn't count towards your eligibility. Watch the communication of Texas A&M. When the switches or where the cutters are going, they're doing a lot of talking to each other. That's a good switch by Pitts. Johnson. There you go. Five points for Sierra Johnson. Sierra Johnson wanted that ball from the time Texas A&M got possession when she was running in transition. She wanted that rebound too. She Arkansas needs to come on no down. offensive rebounds. Johnson needs to want it again. You can't be a one and done big girl inside. You got to constantly want the basketball. Under two to play in the half. Q Davis for the long two. You talked about the versatility of her skill set, and she is a player that is looking for, just give her space because she can score. And Texas A&M throws it away. Well, coming up at halftime, less than 90 seconds away, we'll take a look at what makes Renaya Davis such a tough matchup for Tennessee. Plus, South Carolina's Aaliyah Boston and her shot blocking.
LSU's matchup zone defense, how nobody wants to go up against it. That's all coming up at the half. Yeah, there's not a coach in the SEC that wants to play LSU. <laughs> No, and now that the, the Tigers have Nikki Fargus back on the sideline as well after being having to miss two games because of COVID protocol. Slocum. Arkansas has hit five threes this afternoon. Offensive yeah. foul. Uh, Johnson showed a little bit of frustration, but she's just got to continue to do what she is doing, making her presence felt. And Texas A&M's got to recognize on the backside, Destiny Pitts is wide open because her person is helping in to double, double team in on Sierra Johnson. Yeah, if Texas A&M's post players like Sierra Johnson and India Jones get aggressive and want the ball all the time like we've seen little flashes of them doing. I mean, that can make a difference in how deep this team goes in the postseason. Because they've already got the, you know, they've got the ability to rebound the basketball. They've got scoring guards, but the consistency from the post play. That's going to be the second on Sierra Johnson. You're talking about the versatility of Texas A&M. Well, Arkansas has it as well. Erin Barnum, she's normally that post player inside, but she has the ability, too, to put the ball on the deck. Twenty seconds on the shot clock for Arkansas. Slocum from the free throw line. A second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Texas A&M led by six points in this game, but they haven't scored in over two minutes. Kayla Wells, off the window. Slocum on the move. Back to the trail. Whew, scary moment there if you're A&M. But a two-point game at the half. Arkansas hit five threes, but also they have outscored Texas A&M in the paint, 14 paint points. They had 14 in the first meeting with Texas A&M. Well, and what Arkansas has been able to do when you're trying to take away their three-point shot driving in the lane. Now, how will Arkansas adjust? They'll have to Chelsea Dungy back in that second half. Arkansas 12-0 when leading at the half. Can they hang on here and get rid of two early fouls and they had to use McKenzie Green at the point guard position? Well, a turnover started to happen for Texas A&M without Jordan Nixon running that point. She is that calming factor for A&M. Arkansas is 12-0 and leading at the half, even if it's only just a two-point lead. Razorbacks looking for their third win over a ranked opponent this season. Foul on Kayla Wells. Wells really gave them a spark in that first quarter. She had six points to start for Texas A&M. She was really looking for a shot, and not her three, but the mid-range two. There's Wells for that mid-range two on cue. Now keep an eye on Sierra Johnson and Taylor Thomas. Johnson is going to be the one required to help on a lot of the penetration that comes about from Arkansas. Taylor Thomas crashing the glass. That's the first offensive rebound for Arkansas. Slocum. Come on, 
Texas A&M had a six-point lead in that first half, allowed Arkansas to come back and take over. Since Chelsea Dungy guarding India Jones. I would go right inside to India Jones with Chelsea Dungy having three fouls. Taylor Thomas has whistled for the foul before the shot, so Aggies will inbound under the basket. That's the third on Thomas. Three ball, Aaliyah Wilson. Off of the knee of Arkansas, A&M takes over. They've scored seven straight points. Well, Leah Wilson right now is filling it offensively. You give her space, and remember, she is an Arkansas transfer. You got to believe this is a little extra motivation playing for the team that she initially went to school. Well, it wasn't the first meeting because she had a career-high 27 points against Arkansas back on January 10th. Texas A&M coming out strong. Seven straight points for A&M in the third quarter. Celebrating Black History Always, an initiative by ESPN and the SEC Network. We have the two first African-American women that played basketball for the University of Arkansas. You have Joy Dillard and Deborah Cooper, who played in 1976. They both lettered on the inaugural women's basketball team. And interesting enough, Joy Dillard never had played organized basketball before. She had only played with the boys in the neighborhood, but she tallied 381 career, uh, career rebounds in 53 games. And after graduation, while pursuing her PhD, she came back and, and tutored student athletes at the University of Arkansas. But it wasn't just on the court she made a difference as well. She also was a founding member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated at the University of Arkansas. Deborah Cooper also played on that same inaugural team. And it's so cool, it runs in the family for her, her son. Kobe Hamilton eventually came back and played wide receiver at Arkansas, so a family of Razorbacks. Right now, Arkansas finds themselves trailing. Texas A&M came out of the half and scored seven straight points to take back the lead. Wells looking for Johnson, gets through her fingertips. And that's where Texas A&M needs that hockey pass. Wells would have been more suited to make the ball to pass to the wing to Leah Wilson and then the pass in to Sierra Johnson. Daniels. Kicks to Destiny Slocum, no. Yeah, we should keep a stat on what the percentage is for Arkansas after 15 seconds in that shot clock. They are so good straights. early. Yeah, they missed seven straight shots right now. Ramirez off the screen. Slocum fade away. Well, I'm still keeping an eye on Sierra Johnson. How much is she going to continue to work to want the basketball ends in Johnson? It's hard to help. Second chance for Arkansas. Those and have been only, few and far between. 
There were only two Arkansas players in there amongst four. Taylor Thomas and Chelsea Dungy doing the work. Everybody else for Arkansas was getting back on defense, but those two went after the ball. After the ball. And Dia Jones just picked up her third foul. But you look at the two-man game here. There's been a double team, a lot of help coming over to Sierra Johnson, but off the pick and roll on one side, not much help can be there. Michaela Daniels hits from deep for the second time. Arkansas up to six made threes. Wells is fouled by Slocum. You know, Arkansas, we talked about the big three, but Michaela Daniels is that when Arkansas needs a basket, she can find the space and able to knock down that three-point shot. Look at these now, percentages. Arkansas has, yeah, so many good three-point shooters, and they're second in the nation in total made threes. But you know what this reminds me of? Remember last year, the Oregon Ducks and the high percentage of the three-point shooters that really everybody on the floor could shoot. That really spreads out. It spreads out the defense. It makes the defense have to respect the shot. That's why Arkansas can get those drives to the basket. And Arkansas is finding them today. Still outscoring Texas A&M in the paint, 16 to 12. Arkansas has already knocked off two top 10 teams in number four Baylor and number three UConn. Can they pick up another one today? Arkansas going back, or I'm sorry, Texas A&M going back to that matchup zone. Inside to Johnson, right over Taylor Thomas. Gary Blair has to be pleased that his senior has really taken the coaching and what he has asked her to do to make the improvement from their last game against LSU to today. Oh, and that's going to be a foul on Jordan Nixon. But Sierra Johnson feeling pretty good. Well, if you want to catch up with paint points when you're in a deficit from behind, go to your five players. Sierra Johnson said, hey, coach, give me the ball. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck with you back here in Bryan College Station. If you didn't know, the Super Bowl is today, and I think the neighbor's household is ready because check out baby Bowen. He is ready to cheer on the Chiefs. And you see his mama, JC, is a big Kansas City fan. I want to know where I can get the headband with the hair. I'm loving that. That is adorable. I also love the game plan for today. Eat, nap, catch Arkansas versus Texas A&M with dad coaching, and then uh, prep for the Super Bowl kickoff. That sounds like a good game plan to me. I think that follows my game plan for today. Yeah. <laughs> I got my red on for the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, Texas A&M has come out of the locker room with a renewed sense of energy. They've outscored Arkansas 14 to seven here in the third quarter. Aaron Barnum on the spin. And I have seen Mike Neighbors do this before. Texas A&M defense so concerned with the, the players and the shooters on the perimeter to start going isolation to his post player inside. Mackenzie Green here. Eight seconds. Pitch traveled. I think it's time, too, for Chelsea Dungy to take over. I think she's been playing kind of careful. She's had those three fouls. It's Dungy time. Do you mean right now, this moment? Because Called it's it up. Called it up. 
Dialed up number 33, her first points in the second half, and it ties the game at 44. Just watching how intense she played in that UConn game. Erin Barnum, you go all the way into the free throw line. I think it's a momentum swing. First, Dungy hitting the three, and then Aaron Barnum just playing determined with the steal and then going full length, the focus for the finish and getting themselves to the sideline. You think the coaching staff from Arkansas like that? All three of them were up on the sideline. Lots of energy right now in Arkansas's favor as they have the lead back. Eight straight points by the Razorbacks in 56 seconds. Wilson for two, no. Falls back in her hands, banks it home. Well, Wilson's going to have to carry the load from on the perimeter right now. There's four guards in the game for Texas A&M. Wells, the dump off to Sierra Johnson. Double figures for Sierra. Barney looking for space and gets the foul called on Johnson. That's her third. Kayla Wells on the drive. Sierra Johnson does a nice job of spacing away, makes herself available to get the easy two. But on the defensive side of thing with Erin Barnum, all she's got to do is slide her feet. She doesn't and really just stay straight up because and give a step. She has the height advantage over Erin Barnum. Well, Friday we'll have a gymnastics triple header right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app, Alabama and Georgia. The gym dogs get us started at 6 Eastern. Then the big one, number one against number two, Florida and LSU at 7.30, followed by Auburn and Missouri. Two weeks ago, remember, everybody had a bye last week. Two weeks ago, Florida put up the highest score in the nation. LSU put up the second highest score after that. Wow, so number one and number two going against each other. That's going to be a show. It is going to get heated in the PMAC. It's getting heated in this one. Remember, the last two games between Arkansas and Texas A&M have been decided by a total of two points. But four key players have three fouls. Chelsea Dungy for Arkansas, but then Sierra Johnson, Jordan Nixon, and then Dia Jones for A&M. Yeah, no Johnson, no India Jones on the floor right now for Texas A&M. They have the advantage inside when they are on the floor. Ella Tefeano, number zero in white, is down there right now for the Aggies. Wells on the move, gets fouled. You know, recently for Arkansas, we've been talking about rebounding and how they've started to look a little more aggressive in that area. Not today. Texas A&M is out rebounding them 34 to 13. Wow. Well, when you know that you're playing against a team like Texas A&M, you got to get back in transition. They've only, and they're only sending two to the glass.
Kayla Wells with 16 points, her fourth straight game in double figures, the longest streak of the season for her. Dungey loses it. Wilson. Zay Green cleans it up. Arkansas hasn't scored in over two minutes and 30 seconds. and m can hold for the last shot of the quarter. And Texas A&M doing it with three of their starters on the bench in foul trouble. Tefano's got to hurry. This is McKenzie Green for two. Eight straight points to end the quarter for Texas A&M. Well, when you see this, that is message received for your senior, number 40, in Sierra Johnson. Keep in mind, Sierra Johnson does have three fouls. So does India Jones and Jordan Nixon for Texas A&M. Aggies just rolled offensively in that third quarter, outscoring Arkansas 26 to 16. Well, Chelsea Dungy, she has three fouls as well, but Arkansas is going to have to run some offense for number 33 in the corner. Well, Dungy only has three points in the second half. She leads the SEC in points per game. When we normally see Chelsea Dungy playing in that middle third, that lane area, she's so good at driving to the basket. A lot in this game she's playing on the corners or playing on the wing. Sierra Johnson will head to the free throw line. That's the fourth foul on Taylor Thomas for Arkansas. You know, now the only thing that A&M really has not gotten production from is offensively India Jones. Only five points so far in the ballgame. And she's not out there right now. She's got three fouls on the bench. Hugh Davis pull up. Boy, she's given Arkansas some good minutes. I love her game. It is smooth. It is comp compact. Just quick. One dribble pull off right off that screen. Slocum fouled. Third foul on Slocum. Now, Leah Wilson has done a nice job for Texas A&M, staying very offensive-minded, always a threat when she gets the ball. And Johnson threw it away. She was looking for Zay Green on that opposite block. But she predetermined that a double team was going to come. It wasn't there. And if Sierra Johnson is isolated one-on-one, -on -one, that's a no-pass zone. She's got to go score it. Ramirez.
Wells will try the other side. There's some open room and the first points for AM in the fourth quarter. Kayla Wells started out this game. One of the things Gary Blair wanted was a quick start in the first quarter. He got that from Kayla Wells. He's getting it as well in this fourth quarter from her. Double figure points now in five of her last six games. Pretty shot at the elbow from Aaliyah Wilson. Largest lead for the Aggies. And Dungey is rejected. And Dia Jones back in, up to Johnson. It'll stay with Texas A&M. Aggies trailed by two at the half. Now enjoying their largest lead at 10. Well, and getting it done offensively, but defensively as well. Aaliyah Wilson with the squad. That allows A&M to head the other direction. Wilson adding that block to her double-double this afternoon. 12 points and 10 rebounds as she'll take a seat. Sierra Johnson up to 13 points. Amber Ramirez late on the double team. And that you got to compliment the passer to Sierra Johnson, understanding if you're giving it to her, you're leading her right into a score. And Gary Blair talked about the passing of his team, and he talked about pocket passes. And we're not, not talking about pocket as far as the bounce pass but making a pass right into the scorer's hand so that she doesn't have to catch it and readjust. That's a great improvement I have seen in A&M today. Nixon shot is off. Last touch by Arkansas. I feel like every time we've talked to Gary Blair recently, it's been about hockey assists, getting the extra pass, and then also those pocket passes. He's been preaching them. Well, he talked about, look, if you say it enough, what becomes important is what you emphasize. And so that has been his point of emphasis these last few days of practice. Nixon turns it over. But if you're Texas A&M, you can't get comfortable because Arkansas can shoot the ball and they can just they just need to get they just need a little kerosene to heat up. Oh, I don't think the Aggies have forgotten that Arkansas hit 14 three-pointers against them back on January 10th. Dungey to the free throw line. Dungey on the cut to the basket. It was India Jones with the bump. She didn't need to come in. Sierra Johnson had already, already rotated over to be, be between Dungey and the basket. That's four on India Jones now. Oh, excuse me, it was on Sierra Johnson. Now that could be crucial because Johnson has been more of a factor posting up inside than India Jones has been able to be so far today. And Dungy gets them both, no surprise there. She's first in the nation and made free throws. To Fano. India Jones travel. It's been a rough night for India Jones. Offensively, she's had some foul trouble. 
and she's fortunate to be called for a travel because that could have been her fourth foul because Dungey was in the position to draw the offensive foul. Daniels just pure. That's her fourth three-pointer. I'm telling you, don't start getting ready for your Super Bowl party just yet because Arkansas can score the ball. They can get themselves right back into a chance to get this game. They've hit eight threes this afternoon. Offensive foul on Jordan Nixon. Slocum steps up to take the charge. Texas A&M on top, under five to go, but watch out, Arkansas on their heels. We're so excited to celebrate Black History Month and all the women who have come and had an impact on this great game and super excited to celebrate our own Carolyn Peck, who was the very first African-American woman to win a national championship back in 1999 with Purdue. She set the standard and just incredible. The 1999 AP National Coach of the Year went on to be a head coach and general manager of the Orlando Miracle in the WNBA. And of course, played in the SEC for Vanderbilt where she was also an assistant coach. So Peck, we are so thankful for the example that you have set for all of us and everything you have done for women's basketball as a whole. I stand on the shoulders of the coaches that really broke through ceilings before me. When you look at Coach C. Vivian Stringer that is getting ready to celebrate her 50th season. And she has taken three different programs to the Final Four. When you see and have uh, a role model like that, it makes you believe there's anything's possible. It's been so neat to be able to look back on all the the first, the women who paved the way, specifically in the SEC, we've been looking at, at these athletes that came and were the first black women to play basketball at their respective schools. And it's been really neat to, to learn about that piece of history and especially important, need to do that moving forward, not just in February, but always. Well, yeah, I had looked at this month as not black history, but black her story because a lot of times when I was researching and trying to find the first women that had played basketball at these schools in the SEC, it was hard to find. I had to really do a lot of digging and research. So being able to really educate and celebrate these women has been huge. Arkansas has been trying to play catch up here most of the second half. Texas A&M was just took hold right out of the half, but Arkansas now on a 9-0 run. I told you, they have the scoring uh, ability and score in so many different ways. This is a 30-second timeout. Texas A&M calls a timeout here. Remember, the last two games between these teams have been decided by a total of two points. Let's take you back to their meeting in the SEC tournament last March. This was in the quarterfinals. Texas A&M had a 17-point lead in this game, but Arkansas pulled off the second largest comeback in the conference tournament history. They led for a whopping eight seconds, but that's all that would matter as Arkansas won by a point up off the window and Texas A&M would hang on to win that meeting by one. So no surprise, and it's a close game right now. Well, in Texas A&M, I was going to say, needs to try to go back to inside, but they cannot force it because now Arkansas knows that's what they're looking for. This is Ramirez for three, banks it in, Amber Ramirez. That is long ball number four for her. Oh, Wells was wide open. She answers.
Texas A&M has led by as many as 12. The last time Arkansas scored, Amber Ramirez put Sierra Johnson in a ball screen action and was able to really score behind that screen because there was no help. She didn't have a ton of room, but she will get herself to the free throw line. So you watch how Amber Ramirez comes off that ball screen. Sierra Johnson doesn't step up. That gives room for the three. And then on the other side, ball reversal with the defense having to rotate gives Kayla Wells enough time to get her three shot off. These are the top two teams in the SEC when it comes to three-point percentage. The officials going to the monitor. I think they were confirming who the shooter was going to be. And it will be Amber Ramirez. For two, it was not a three. She was inside the arc, so she'll get two shots. She's an 84% free throw shooter. Yeah, right now, if I'm Mike Neighbors, I'm putting the ball in the hand of Amber Ramirez. How she is so, she has the ability to step back behind a screen and score it. Well, she's going to, she's going to get a blow right now to finish these last two minutes. But she is the most deadly player off those ball screens, and especially recognizing getting Sierra Johnson involved. Now she scored the last seven points for Arkansas. We'll take a quick breather here, one point game. Wilson, oh, an open block. And Mike Neighbors is going to call a timeout here. Arkansas down by three. A minute 33 to go. Razorbacks with two timeouts. Texas A&M with two timeouts. Texas A&M has really been able to play through and get offensive production from Kayla Wells. She started out hot and very aggressive in the first half attacking the basket and then in the second half finding space for her three-point shot she's just had an all been an all-around scoring threat for texas a&m 21 points for kayla wells her season high is 22 points and now arkansas trying to figure something out shot clock moving down by three Amber Ramirez back in the game, coming off the screen. That's the shot you want. That's five three-pointers by Amber Ramirez. That means she has made five threes in the last four games. Well, and Mike Neighbors recognizing that Sierra Johnson is not going to come up and help on that ball screen. You see that Johnson is still back in the lane. That gives Amber Ramirez just enough room. And on the back paddle, oh, she took a little stumble. Ramirez, five of nine today, leads Arkansas with 21 points. Remember, she came in hot her last three games. She was averaging 19 points a game and averaging five threes per game. Well, she's hit both of those today. And Mike Neighbors going offense for defense. He put Amber Ramirez in just to score right off that screen, took her right back out of the game. Well, she scored their last 10 points. Wilson on the baseline is short. Dungy comes out with it. Look who's Arkansas going back in. will use its final timeout. But you saw right away Amber Ramirez run to the scores table. She knows Mike Neighbors wants her in the ball game. 
So, so now defensively Texas, for AM, what do you have to do about Ramirez? You have to adjust to that ball screen action. You've got to switch it. And when you have the Barnum setting the screen and rolling the basket, she's not going to be much bigger than any guard that is going to be defending. If her defense helps over, you've got the big player. You can just lob it up over the top. That's not a very risky pass. She's going to be close to the basket. That has an opportunity to score. He also has to talk about after we score, what do you do next? Because Arkansas, again, has no timeouts. So as soon as they get the ball, they're headed full steam the other direction. You've got to make sure that you stop the ball, and you've got to make sure that you're matched up by the time you get to the three-point line. They inbound to Jones, back to Wells, and now Jordan Nixon will set things up. Again, a five-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Jordan Nixon. She did it last time against Arkansas. Could that push Texas A&M in front for the final time? Arkansas still has 8.4 seconds, no timeouts. You got to pick up the ball, though. You cannot let Slocum have the full clock to bring the ball down the floor. And there's a blocking foul called on Aaliyah Wilson. But Texas A&M had the foul to give. So Arkansas will inbound in front of their own bench. 5.7 seconds left, down by two, no timeouts. They have to get the ball in. Well, and you've got to switch all screens. Take away the three. The worst that can happen is that Arkansas gets a layup and you go to overtime. But you don't want to allow a clean luck at the three-point shot. A two to tie, a three to win. Amber Ramirez, well short, and the ball bounces out with .9 left. Can it be that Jordan Nixon, for the second time against Arkansas this season, need to try to get a quick foul right away? Kayla Wells to inbound for AM. Into Nixon, she's immediately fouled by Dungy. Point three on the clock. Remember, Arkansas had a foul to give. So they'll have to foul one more time, but they're running out of time. Yeah, it'll have to be quick. And again, trying to draw an offensive foul. But the most important thing for Texas A&M, they need to get the ball inbounds. They do not have any timeouts. Texas A&M does it again. Jordan Nixon does it again. The shot to beat Arkansas, a two-point win.